So in today's fast-paced world, you and I can overlook things that cost us a lot of money, cost us a lot of time, and sadly cost us a lot of happiness. So we're going to unpack in this episode this thing, this word, this understanding called wisdom. So why is wisdom so much more important than just being smart? So let me break it down. Being smart is primarily about possessing knowledge, intelligence, and cognitive skills. While wisdom encompasses the application of knowledge, life experience, ethical considerations, and a broader perspective on decision making. You see, one can be smart, but not actually wise. And the thing with wisdom, it often takes time, a body of work, life experiences, and different perspectives to actually build and develop. Over my 24 years in business and first eight years of my life after high school serving United States Marines, I've ran across a lot of smart, dumb people, but I ran across a lot of wise people. Massive difference. So let's take another step deeper. Here are three different distinctions between somebody that's smart versus wise. Number one, intelligence versus experience. Smart individuals tend to have high degree of factual information, problem solving capabilities, and cognitive skills. Now, a wise person has experienced the ability to apply knowledge and experience things to make sound judgments and decisions. Wisdom is about understanding the deeper implications of actions and decisions and considering long-term consequences. Number two, problem solvers versus decision makers. Smart individuals excel in problem solving and finding solutions to complex issues. Wise individuals not only identify solutions, but also consider the ethical, moral, and long-term implications of their choices. Number three, humility versus emotional intelligence. Smartness can sometimes be associated with intellectual pride or arrogance. Wise individuals are more attuned to the emotions of others, show empathy, and are open to learning from their own mistakes. Now, if you've been following with us for the first six weeks, the first six chapters of Ecclesiastes, I personally have been deeply disappointed. King Solomon, who's known as the richest and wisest king, who's, in my opinion, been on a rant for the last six chapters. But wait, King Solomon chapter 7, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, is now back to the guy that we learned about and read about in all of Proverbs. He's back to dropping gems. He's back to dropping mean tweets. He's back to his old form from here, I believe, going forward. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7, I believe King Solomon is guiding us to three main key areas. Number one is patience. The second one is integrity, and the third one is integration. So let's unpack that. What does King Solomon mean here in Ecclesiastes as it relates to patience? Let's take a look at this. The end of a matter is better than its beginning, and patience is better than pride. Now, patience is a deep virtue. I know I'm working on it too as well, and so are, so are many of you. But patience is a deep virtue that can impact us in a major beneficial way in all aspects of our life, from our personal lives, our financial lives, our spiritual lives, our family lives. I can recall in my younger years wanting things fast and in a hurry. Yet the older I've gotten, I've realized that all good things worth having take time. I've rushed into relationships, business dealings, and even financial commitments that ended up biting me in the butt. It cost me not only money, but time and relationships. If that's you, please put in the comment section below. I am more patient in my results and more urgent in my actions. I am more patient in my results, yet more active and urgent in my actions. The second one, the importance of integrity. Here's what King Solomon says here in Ecclesiastes chapter 7 about that very word. Wisdom makes one wise person more powerful than ten rulers in a city. Indeed, there is no one on earth who is righteous, no one who does what is right and never sins. You see, that's why you and I need more of God in our lives. See, we are sinful by default, by nature, we are just naturally sinful. And the more we lean on God, the more we find out our purpose and discover His specific gifts, talents and traits, His designed specifically for us, then we can be more righteous in our dealings and lean not more on our understanding, but lean on His understanding. So therefore He, in Proverbs, He says He can make our paths straight. I recall our drill instructors in the Marine Corps teaching us the 13 leadership traits for Marines. They are judgment, justice, decisiveness, integrity, dependability, tact, initiative, enthusiasm, bearage, unselfishness, courage, knowledge, and loyalty, as well as endurance. When you have all those 13 leadership tests put together, ask our drill instructor. DI, Senior Drill Instructor Valentine, what's the most important leadership trait of them all? You know what he says? Number one, integrity. Why integrity? Because why 
Will all those things stay upright by themselves without integrity, making sure that's the firm foundation, the glue, the cement to making sure those leadership traits all stay strong. So without integrity, you don't have glue. Without integrity, you don't have a foundation. Without integrity, you're just kind of talking out your you know what, and hopefully you come through. Integrity makes sure you come through. And if you want to live a life of wealth, happiness, joy, and prosperity, and you want to look yourself in the mirror straight every morning as you're doing your personal hygiene, my friend, please invoking a lot more integrity in your life. And guess what? I'm right there with you. Because one of the things that comes with integrity is this word called reputations. One of the very few verbal things that my father ever taught me. He says, Matt, live a life of integrity. Come through with what you say. Promise less, and whatever it is that you do promise, come through. Here's what King Solomon says even in Proverbs about reputation. It goes like this. A good reputation and respect are worth much more than silver and gold. You see, integrity is the foundation of trust and credibility. It's about doing what's right, regardless if the cameras are on or off and when nobody's looking. You are still doing the right thing. I mean, this year, just this year alone, how many examples have you seen in the news, in the media, of people publicly being shamed, companies filing bankruptcy, people getting fired, they thought they were winning in the short term, but yet, regardless of how great or rich or famous they thought they were, long term they were exposed. Now, is that the reputation you want? Do you want to have a reputation of you looking over your back? Well, consider that integrity and reputation in you expressing who you are in this world, by the God-given dream that God has given you in fulfilling your purpose. Which now leads me to number three, integration. Here's what King Solomon says about that very word. It is good to grasp the one and not let go of the other. Whoever fears God will avoid all extremes. You see, integration is about infusing together all aspects of your walk with God. Fusing together everything from your faith, your family, your finance, your fitness, your fun. And on Sundays, football, go Bears. But here's the thing. You shouldn't have to be a different person in those other aspects of your life. And if you are, that's called stress. I remember one time a consultant from IBM came to our office and they're doing a survey based on improving our performance and asking us some questions. They come back. I call him Big Blue because his eyes matched his shirt. So what's up, Big Blue? How did I do? He says, Matt, do you love what you do? I'm like, yeah, I love being in the insurance business. I love being an entrepreneur. Yeah, I love doing what I do. Are you sure? I said, yes, I love doing I, I love doing this. I love doing what I do. And he goes, well, based on the survey here and based on some of the questions here, it seems like you do love what you do because you ain't got to be a chameleon like a lot of other people do. Sometimes people feel they got to be different around their family, got to be different around their coworkers, they got to be different under boss, they got to be different in church. That's living a fake life. So if you want to not live a fake life, which means less stress in your life, integrate the things that we just talked about here so far, here in the Wealth and Wisdom series, to relieve the stress from your shoulders and increase the internal spiritual pressure of God wanting to use you in a very mighty and powerful way. Once I learned the gift of integration, I was able to focus in on what God wanted me to do and I would get to chase that and pursue that for the rest of my life. So if you want to implement more of integration into your life, please put it in the comment section below this phrase. I am integrating faith in all that I do. I am integrating faith in all that I do. And by the way, side note, the coolest thing about integrating faith, yes, you get to remove fear from your life too as well. That being said, I'd love to hear what you've got to say. You agree with me, you don't agree with me, please put it in the comment section below. If you want to go ahead and check out the whole entire Proverbs series or the first six chapters of Ecclesiastes, please click right here to pursue the wealth and wisdom series, and I hope it helps you out. Please let me know your feedback if you're able to watch the other episodes. That being said, I appreciate you tuning in. Please just hit subscribe, hit like to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your Mighty Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.